Hello, this is NinK78, and I'm bringing you a Let's Play called Indiana Jones and the Fate of, Let's Fate of Atlantis. A little bit of backstory, I have played this a bunch as a kid, starting with the CD version, and then I got the Wii version, well, Wii version loosely because it's a side mode on Staff of Kings. I got the Wii version as a teenager, played that a bunch, and now um, I'm doing this through GOG. All right, Jones, how are you gonna find that statue with all this junk? This is my first time Let's Playing, so I want to see how it goes, and I chose my favorite game to start out with. Um, uh, all I did do a little research beforehand I did play the CD version so I didn't get any chance to experience what the copyright protection is like but in this game in the manual you would have to open it up and look at the pictures to add certain pages and input the celestial alignment in order to get past the security of it Alright, we just broke in somewhere, and we have to look for certain statues. It's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. It's a medieval gargoyle, or a good imitation. There's a bunch here, but... It's a stone carving of Shiva. It doesn't seem like it's what we're looking for. Some kind of funeral or... He thought this was a Maasai warrior. Oof. I like that this is a touch where you could play in the intro and it's uh, just getting you used to the fact that it's a point and click game. I have played a bunch of other games and most of them are on consoles. like textiles from the Shamit collection. We're gonna wanna remember uh what stuff what collections are where for later. Looks like beadwork from the Phoenix collection. Alright. Looks dangerous. No doubt. Well I was trying to pick up that rope but unfortunately that statue fell on us. And it seems like we're in a building of sorts now that we've moved on from up there and have windows. I think I've read them all. Maybe we're in a library because there's a bunch of stuff here. Textbooks. There's nothing of importance here. School desk. There's nothing of importance here. Well, if we're in a school desk, we must be in a school library. Forgot to put my phone on silent. There's the exit. The stairway is closed for repairs. So we had to climb the side of the building and break in because we couldn't use the stairs. I don't know what this is about then. These books don't look familiar. Uh oh. Uh. I also like the credits on the bottom of the screen. Very nice touch to most older movies. As this is based on one, but I feel like a standal it's a standalone Better story. Get that roof checked. There's a book up there. To fall. There's a cat the figurine. Of a Siamese idol. And a real cat. Also, I don't know why, but when he falls backwards, I don't know why they placed that coal shoe right there in that uh, area. You would think the public would fall down more easily. 
There are a lot of voice actors and actresses on there, and one of them in particular, I, because I didn't really read as a kid, uh, I actually thought Harrison Ford um, voiced Indy, but no, it is Doug Lee. A fine sample of bitumen. All right. It's a greasy old towel. And we'll search the lockers. Doesn't matter which lockers I'll you click be. on. Here's what I've been searching for. But the thing you are searching for will always be behind the last locker that you check. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. Now that, that part is over, um, there will, there's going to be a cutscene. I'll try not to talk too much through. I do, uh, I do think that if I quip too much, if you guys think I do, uh, I'm not trying to rag on the game in a negative way. I'm just trying to be funny. I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith. Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car, Wayne. You'll need one. Hmm. What is this? <laughs> Supervisor for the Jastro expedition, my first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapgood. She was my assistant, a spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. Well, where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Alright, and then Indy goes off. Um, a couple of things about that cutscene. I would say that it is very strange that the guy um, decided to come in and he's like, all right, can you find a statue to match this key? How do we even know that the statue looks the same as the key? Also, if it was truly a fake or whatever, why would he care that much? Also, I think he should not point a gun at the window if you're trying to threaten people. Maybe it's just me. Um, so now we get into the real part of the gameplay, and if you, uh, you can skip all of that, and if you skip all of that, you'll end up here when you first start up the game, and 
and he recounts what happens a little bit. And then you'll find that this is in your inventory. So these are the actions that Indy can do. Some of them are default when you look at stuff in your inventory. Also sometimes you can have a suggested highlight of what you could do when you look at objects. But most of the time you'll just walk there. Because this is a point and click adventure game, you probably want to pick up everything you see. And look at everything you see. And also talk to everyone you can. So let's look at this bar key. Imagine the suckers who actually pay to see Sophia's Lost World lectures. It's a taxi. She's counting up the receipts. Sometimes the things are just quite blunt, and that's okay, because that's, that's the style that this company pr particularly does. You can talk to. The show sold out, sir. Um, we don't get any special ticket just because we're Indiana Jones. Hold on. No seats, no standing room, no exception. Nope. Okay, well, our goal is to get into the theater because that's where Sophia is. Let's take a look at this newspaper. It's today's paper. All right, we got today's paper. See anything special about it. Nothing special in the phone booth. I can't make a call. I'm out of nickels. Alright, well, that makes sense. Now, if you're playing along, I would recommend saving here because this game does have quite the replay value. Um here. Um you could do different things and it'll lead to different paths. The three different paths are the team path, the wits path, and the fist path. Um, I'm going to start with the team path and I'll do all three paths. I'll, when I go for the other two paths, I'm going to come back here and show you the other solution and how to finish. Or start on that default path, but only doing this part where you get into the theater and showing some dialogue later that changes when you do uh, get onto that path. And then I'll just do that path. And at some point at the end of the game, they all meet up to the same place. Alright, so I'm going sh to get. Because this is the team path, I'm going to mess with this door here. Mm, it's unlocked. Wait, what now? Did they go kick it off? And talk to this gentleman that just came out because he is here. This isn't my favorite way to get into the theater, but it is certainly my favorite path, the team path that is. I'm here to enjoy Madam's outrageous orations. This ain't that kind of show. Oh, uh, did you mi uh, misunderstand me? Um, because maybe it's a really good thing that I'm listening to her orations. Uh, let's try this one. Oh, of course not. Madam Sophia is a serious thinker. Don't kid around, pal. You're talking about my idol. Oh, she's the greatest, though. No kidding. I think she's the greatest. Me too, Dad. Don't look out, her. She's smart. Yeah, she's very smart. Smart? I'll say. You know what I really like? It's the way she... she... The way she makes things easy to understand? That's it. All that smart stuff seems so easy when I'm listening to her. Say, you're okay for a college boy. Come on in. Alright. We got our way into the theater. And at this point, nothing else makes a too much more of a difference. Now, I have a problem that the, the reason why it's not my favorite way to get in is because um, this, 
the guy just seems to leave and let us in, and this guy assumes that this the other guy just got fired. And I don't particularly like that inconsistency. Excuse me. Aha! You must be the new doorman. About time to get rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. Oh, really? I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. Are you crazy? During the show? Yes. Write a letter. Aw. Alright, we'll just go out there then. Come on! You can't go out there. Think it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is a phantom. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. Five thousand years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Yeah, but we really need to talk to her. This is kind of a matter of life and death. Hey, she's just coming to the exciting part. What befell this serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Where did she get all those pictures? They look very realistic onto this projector. Alright. No, really, though. Hey! She's still talking. Are you sure about that? Wait! She's still talking. <sighs> okay, well. I think we should talk to the stagehand more and see if we could get rid of him. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? You look tired. Wouldn't you like to call it a day? Nah, sooner or later I get to run the ghost out there. That's always a big moment. Hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? You're fired. Madam told me to tell you, you're fired. What? You can't fire me. <laughs> um. Oh no? Take a look at my wallet. A bribe? Who do you think you're talking to? You, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't Excuse think me. that necessarily yeah, worked. What now? Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life. Uh, didn't she ever get bored though? Did you ever get bored? She does rattle on, but I've got a job to do. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Don't you have any hobbies? Sure, I read. Reading is his hobby. But what if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Reading's not a bad hobby. Alright, well, here, you want something to read? Here. No thanks, I read it years ago. I still got my own copy. Oh, but that one was a special one. It was marked up by a Nazi. No? Okay, fine. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? Alright. Well, let's just ruin the show. We don't, he didn't, and I say ruin because he didn't really tell us when to run the ghost out here. won't go any further in that direction. 
Oh, I can pull. Oh, yeah. Just push this button here. It's ready. There it goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through. Uh. May I present Nuram Sal, the great Atlantean god of. of. Deceit. Deceit. Indiana Jones? You've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack o' lantern. Oh, great. Good night, folks. Well, that was a good way to ruin the show. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. I'd say it's about time. Alright. Her office is upstairs, apparently. Oh, no! Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. We took his coat earlier. I don't know why he has another one, but it would make sense if you never saw the intro. Dr. Uberman, fantastic news. We found the pleasure piece. Also, yes, because the uh, I played the CD version earlier. I mostly heard this, so when I saw the text being terrible, not matching. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. Kind of threw me off, but it is funny. Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this: Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Uberman announced his plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? Uh, you could say pretty much anything here. A lot of the dialogue, even if you try to choose the right one, uh, doesn't seem to make sense. But I'll try to make it make sense here. Sounds like they're dreaming to me. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. Yet you've been dealing goods on the black market. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. The screen shaking is probably a part of the CD, but I'd never seen it in what I remember, which is strange. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. Nurha uh, what? Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. Who knows where these beats really came from? Shh. I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... What? A, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another mind myth. If Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. What were these pieces doing in Iceland, I wonder? Survivors must have sailed there after the great catastrophe. Any port in a storm, huh? Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. Alright. 
We're gonna start on the adventure with our first objective, which is to go find the lost dialogue of Plato. But I think that will happen in the n next video, as soon as we land the truck. Sure. I thought we were flying by a plane. Probably came from the airport. Alright, anyways. See you next video.